Welcome to another Face Hammer video. It's me, Rust the Face, and in this is the second video in the Ionis Cryptborn hobby video blog that I'm doing. So I've just done the rattle cannon. It was kind of a little bit wet outside. Luckily, I had a big cardboard box that I could kind of use as a protection. Um, and uh, did the spray, and I've done a couple installments, so it's taking me like over a couple hours because do a bit, wait for it to dry, do the next one, wait for it to dry in between doing stuff around the house and other things. So, you know, it takes the time. We're gonna settle in for an evening of painting. Um, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon now. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to uh, share the progress and what sprays I used and what exactly Zenithal spraying is. Um, you probably know, but there you go. So. I've just done all the spraying, so I've got Ionis himself on his uh, on his plinth. So I uh, I wear a pair. I wear these. Uh, I've got a box of these gloves. Um, so I always wear gloves when I spray um, because you sometimes you might touch something. You don't want your fingerprints on. Uh, it's good to protect your skin anyway. You can see. The line where I've been sprayed the red um, <laughs> and all I did was just two coats so the first one is black um, and I use you can use GW black I think GW black's great um, it's a fantastic spray um, I've been using uh, color forge um, you know and this is uh, matte black these are matte very matte more matte than GW um, it doesn't really matter use any black um, but as you can see um, if I hold the model up like this, that's kind of black. And if I spin the model round, it's gray. Now, the reason I do two tone is just, uh, it just picks out the detail a bit and shows me how, where the stuff is. And, you know, if I've missed any mold lines or anything that's very rare or gaps. Um, but yeah, so then the next coat on that is my go-to gray, which is Mechanica Standard Gray for GW. I just think it's a great color. It's It's got a little bit of, I want to say blue gray in it. It's it's not. It's 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 just a nice color gray. It's it's just got a, a bit of richness to it. I just really like it. Um, can't put my finger on it, but it's great. So he's going to be mostly black, um, and crimson and and gold. So I could have left him black, but I I like to give him the xenophore and then I can shade back down. It gives a little bit more uh, definition, um, to the areas. It just allows me to see what I'm doing, um. So that's Onus um, himself. So we'll talk about the wings. So these, <laughs> this one's a bit swingy. So if I hold the wing up this way, it's quite dark. And if I move it like this, you can see the red, if I stop swinging it around. Um, and this is two-tone red. Now I did spray these black first. Um, don't necessarily need to do that, but I just prefer it in case you miss anything in the underlying cover. You don't want gray showing through. So, you know, um, and this is two tone, so I use um, Vampire Violet. Now this is purple, um, but it's a uh, reddish purple. Um, this color is fantastic. If you look at the the nozzle, you can see it's almost like the Barrack Nar Burgundy color in a can. It's brilliant. Love it. Did all my Blood Angels with this, um, and then I Zenithaled with a good old favorite. Mephist on red. They do a red as well, Colour Forge, you could use that. I prefer the finish of GW is not as matte, um, so I'm okay using these over the top. You can use Colour Forge ones, I, I do that as well. It's not a problem because when you start actually using washes and, and stuff, you're, you're not, the, the, the actual finish is gonna be more satin anyway. Um, so there's the wings now. Talk about the body. So <laughs> you may wonder why is he on this plastic bag? Now this, oh, just dropped him. So first of this throne, when I sprayed in black after he was dry, I sprayed in black on his base uh, altogether. Um, I wrapped this in Tamiya paper so I could hold him upside down and spray him in vampire violet. Now you notice that is pretty much vampire violet. There's no, like there's very little red there. Um, and then what I did is I sprayed the base with um, Drake Scale Green, which is this, it's almost inky by darkness. It's a very nice color. You can see it there on the nozzle. Um, let that dry. Now, I want to Xenophore this in red, but I want it to be, I don't want to hold it 
because obviously how do I spray? And when I say xenophil, what I mean is you take the can and you if you think of it like this, you're spraying from this direction. So you're never you're never getting under here because you're only spraying around the top like this. And it's sort of at a 45 degree angle and you're dusting and doing it from quite far away. You're not spraying like close. You're spraying kind of like quite far away rather than a bit closer. So you're kind of out here. But you don't want to be too you don't want to get under here because you, you're undoing the undershade. And that's the whole point of this. You want that lovely transition of colour. Um, particularly on beasts and monsters, and it's great for more crushes and things. So there you go. Um Mephiston Red, obviously, for that. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to put him on his base. I'll work out which way he goes round again. He goes this way, I think. Uh, he goes basically back on the base. Now, what I did is to protect the base, I used this really expensive thing. Cling film. Wrap it in cling film. And I maintain the colour. So that's the black with the with the um you can see the the, the spike poke through, that's why it's red, but it doesn't matter because it's gonna be painted anyway. So this this is the Drake Scale Green base. Um and then I can pop him back on. Um like like so and there you go he's red the base is a completely contrasting color um and i've managed to get that zenithal look so from the top he's red and as i spin him round purple if i can get the light under there, that'd be useful um so you know that's the whole point so yeah so i've done that um Wrap this in cling film, plump him back on top. Use that when he when he was drying. By the way, when I when I had him wet because I I basically wore gloves, held him and sprayed him like like this. Now, when he was wet, and I was like, how do I put him down? So I used my my age old favorite blue tack, big blob of blue tack. Pressed it on the throne. I've got a big paint pot. I'll choose this one. It's not a big one. And I just blue tacked him to the paint pot. And then I put this in the, um, like that. And I did put him in the, you know, the rubber thing that you don't knock, knock wash it over, they released. But you could just do it like that. Well, you don't want to lay him down because if it's wet and you lay it down, it's touching and you end up with weird marks. And if you put it on any surface that's porous, um, when you pull it up it will might rip bits of card so you don't want to touch it so that's the reason of wrapping it in masking tape it'll be black under here um but when once it was done there and i could wait for this to dry this was dry wrap this in cling film plop him back on top you know when you find the the joins um it's a little bit tricky so he has got blue tech on there as well so yeah pop it back on top and then spray him red the base is protected you end up with you know waste cling film and this works for airbrushing as well if you if you ever watch and how um do any of his videos he uses this a lot if you want to airbrush something you can literally just like you know i'm doing the armor so if you're airbrushing the armor you can literally just get cling film and do that to protect it and then take it away and you'll have basically done the majority of the base coat on the armor without touching um the the body so you know it's it may seem a bit faffy you don't have to do this stuff you can do this by brush you could just spray it black and then just go in and paint red and and do like a you know a dry brush highlight quite a thick stipple whatever you want to do but this just saves me a bunch of time Gives me a nice base to work from, um, gets the main volume of colour down, and allows me to work um, fairly easy. Now this Tamiya, this is Tamiya masking tape. Um, and you could just use cling film again. I just have this stuff because I I have a lot of it, so I just used it. Um, it can be a little bit of a pain. You've got to be careful if you're putting it over paint um, that it doesn't take it off, especially if you're doing airbrushing. Um, because what happens is you 
it pull it can pull the paint off if it's um not protected so you probably have to use like a varnish or something like that so this isn't very exciting for you guys but i'm just gonna cut this because i wrapped it around a few times so you know there you go <laughs> So, you know, and then you can get the whole dude on there. And then Ionis is not glued to this. He's just got this blue tack stick up his bum. So you can take that off and then he sits on there. So as you can see, like I've got the main volume as a color down. I've not picked up a brush. I've All I've done is I've just put stuff on sticks and sprayed them separately. And you can see already I've got the main areas of the model colored and um, yeah so now i'll get back to painting um not sure what i'll do next might do the base first um kind of want to paint the rider uh so i don't rush him at the end because if i'm if i'm you know um push for time i don't really want to uh to do him last um yeah i don't know i don't know maybe i'll paint him first the dragon might be a little bit more involved um so yeah probably do these bits first but we'll see and uh, once i've done a bit of work i'll come back to you and uh yeah we'll go from there but thanks for watching um i hope that was informative um if you've got any questions pop them in the comments below and uh, i'll catch you all in the next video cheers guys bye